Okay, this video will attempt to demonstrate how to use Mathematica to solve uh, a problem similar to what your um, satellite uh, problem is. And uh, I'm going to make up a problem that could be similar. I believe it'll tell you everything that you need for yours, but it's not the same problem as what you're doing. Um, so you do have to understand what I'm doing here and then uh, build your own uh, model. I will uh, save this uh, except this uh, Mathematica file and I will upload it to Blackboard so you don't have to actually do everything. I'm also going to be cutting and pasting uh, from another um, uh, program that I ran um, so that I don't uh, mistype things. Uh, make sure that uh, you have a clean uh, set here so uh, then if you're going to be using um, vectors, you want to define the i, j, and k vectors like this. The semicolon at the end of a line uh, suppresses the print so that you know it, it won't print. But here's how you define your i, j, and k uh, vectors. Uh, so you want to do that first. The next thing that you want to do is determine what your forces are. Uh, I'm going to make up something. This does not in any way um, should be taken as, you know, what you're what you're doing, but I'm going to sum forces, um, and I've got uh, in my case uh, two forces f x f y, one's in the i direction, one's in the j direction. Uh, maybe you have something similar. Maybe you've got other forces, but this is how you would define the forces that act on it. And then the M O M uh, is moment. This is the moments that are on it, and I am pretending to sum moments around. Uh, say the center of mass, and I and again I just made up something. Uh, I'm using a spring and a damper just like uh, you would, um, and so um, the um, uh, spring and damper I'm not saying is correct. You need to think that through and decide on your own whether or not uh, it should be a positive or a negative. No comments from my part, but hopefully you can get together in your group and discuss that. But I'm going to. Um, just demonstrate how you solve equations. So I'm going to take this one uh, and execute that. The thing that I would do is I would define the acceleration of uh, center of mass and the angular acceleration. So I've done that here. So I say the acceleration of G has got an X component maybe and a Y component. Uh, I and J, you can see what I'm doing here. Hopefully the alpha is uh, a theta double dot. Uh, in the um, k direction. So I'm saying that uh, it's counterclockwise. So we'll execute that one. Um, the next thing is, uh, and th I'm going to do this in two steps, so this isn't a final thing, but um, kind of standing just kind of show what, uh, what happens. Um, here I'm going to sum forces in the x direction. So if you notice right here, I'm going to take the force uh, which was defined up above, and I'm going to dot it with the i direction. What that will do is pull off the x for the the forces in the x direction. Same thing down here in the second equation, and I can dot it with the j. That's going to pull off the uh, j component. So I'm just going to hit uh, execute on this thing, and here's here's something right here. See, there's the third equation in the in the k direction. If you execute that guy, what, you're, what you have is the three equations, fx, which is the x component of the forces. If you look right back here, right, it's just fx. Second equation, this is the uh, y uh, direction of the force or the j direction of the force. So I'm just trying to demonstrate that, that the dot product is working the way I told you. This thing here where it says true, uh, basically if you look at the force equation, there is no forces in the k direction and there, there's no acceleration. Direction. So the equation would be zero equals equals zero, and Mathematica is saying, yeah, that's true. So it's not going to help you, but it is true. It's always true. And then here's your moment equation right here. Okay. So uh, so those are the uh, the four things I have. Far. Now, if you count the number of unknowns, you have five ones, right? You have um, unknowns are fx. F -A G, A, uh, double. Right, so that's five uh, unknowns, and you only have really three good equations that are going to help you anything. So you need something else, right? And if you, you know, if you look at degree of freedom, it should give you some idea that uh, these accelerations are related somehow, which they are, and they will be in your in your um, 
its uh, satellite uh, problem as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write uh, the special point equation. So I'm going to copy them in over here. Um, so this is the way to do them. What I do is I first of all define, I'm just you know saying that I have a point P and I've got a point G and I'm going to write a special point equation between the P and G. You have to decide for your problem, what are your special points, what are they called, uh, and which ones are you going to use to write the special points. I'm just showing you an example. So here's what I like to do uh, when I decide it's going to be between a point P and a point G. I like to say what the acceleration of P is, and you can see all I'm doing is saying that it's got a horizontal uh, APX in the I, and it's got an APY in the J. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, need the R vector from G to P, and I'm just saying that there's numbers RX in the I, and there's an RY in the J. In your problem, maybe you know the numbers, maybe they're positives, maybe there's a cosine in there, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, but that's what those uh, those things are. Uh, and then, uh, you know, as an example, if it was uh, some distance, three cosine of theta, you would you would do this: three cosine of theta, right? So theta and theta is so prime. You do something like that, right? In the y direction, you know, whatever. So you've got to decide what you have. I'm just doing something hokey pokey. So there we go. All right, and then uh, the omega. I, I need the omega in the equation, so the omega is going to be theta dot k. Right. So I define my vectors um, in terms of variables or whatever they are. And uh, then the special point equation is acceleration of p equals equals acceleration of g plus the cross product. And this is how you'd write a cross product. This is, this is cross. It's the alpha cross rg to p. And then here is omega squared. Since omega is a vector, you say omega dot omega, and that'll get you the omega squared. Okay, so that's the special point equation. Let me execute. You can see what it looks like. So here we go at the at the bottom. And now to extract the equations, you'll take the i component here equals equals the i component, the j equals to the j, and then of course the k is zero. And you know the way they always been because all we're doing is two. So what I'm going to do is try to you know pull those off. You can cut and paste if you want, but I'm going to try and be a little more clever. I'm going to define the left-hand side of the special point equation and the right-hand side. All I did was I cut and pasted uh, this guy. So hopefully you recognize those as the left and the right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, build up my equations I did before. So I'm going to paste it in had there and then we'll talk about it. So now here are the equations, the ones that I'm really going to solve. So I have the this guy is the force equation in the x direction equals mass times acceleration of g in the x. Force in the y equals mass times acceleration in the y. Uh, I'm not going to do the k equation of force because obviously that you know I just did that for an example. Here's the uh, moment equation and I'm, I'm taking out just the, the k component. And then I'm taking the left-hand side of my special point equation equals equals the right-hand side in the x direction, and then the, the j, right? So you can paste. It makes no difference to me do it. And then we'll execute that. Okay, so there's my five equations for five unknowns. Um, and then uh, if you notice, there's really seven unknowns because you've now introduced APX and APY. But if you stop and think about it, well, you know, you probably know those values, perhaps, uh, and if you do, uh, then you would type them in. And I'm going to make something up. I'm going to say, yeah, you know what? I think uh, point P is in permanent contact with the ground, maybe, and so I know what the values are. They would be zero. But the point is that if you know what they are, you have to have another special point equation to, to get them. Anyway, hopefully you get the idea. So I'm going to put in APX is zero. By zero, in other words, my point P is fixed to the ground, um, and uh, just as an example, and then uh, I'm going to solve my five equations for five unknowns. The five unknowns: force x, force y, agx, agy, and the uh, angular. Uh, well, the, the t second derivative of the angle. So you, you hit uh, enter on that. If you want, you can you can simplify this. It'll simplify a little bit, probably not very much, but uh, it'll simplify a little bit. So we'll just put a simplifier around there. Not too bad. Uh, so those are the equations. 
And uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and show you how to solve these guys. In the class, during the lecture, the only kind of differential equation we solved was one that you could separate the variables. Well, clearly, you're not going to be able to separate the variables on this guy. Um, but what we are going to do is a numerical solution. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, show you how to do that. I'm going to solve the theta double dot equation, uh, this guy, and you had a how to do so I'm going to cut and paste so I'm going to uh, copy this guy and I'm going to paste him in and I'm going to say okay um, I'm going to pause for just a minute okay I shouldn't have put that simplify on there because <laughs> when I did it uh, before preparing the video I did not use the simplify and uh, and then I realized that uh, I was going to Piece from this guy, and, and it, they looked different. I took it back out. Uh, so anyway, I just re-executed that. So here's here's the next thing that that I did. Notice that all I did, uh, you know, what you can do to get this is just you know highlight this, copy it, put it in right here, and paste it. So all I'm saying is that the theta double dot uh, is is this. So when I say theta double dot, I'm getting this solution that I have up here. And then I'm also um, potentially going to be using the, you know, I want to know what the F, the force in the X direction is and the force in the Y direction. So I did the same thing. I basically cut and pasted from the FX from right here, and I just pasted it in and said the FX was equal to, and I pasted it, right? So I just copied and pasted those guys. Um, so that was the next step, and uh, we'll execute that. So now, now I have the and the FY. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to show you how to solve this numerically. Now, if you're going to solve it numerically, now you have to have the numbers for each one of these variables. Up until now, I haven't really worried about it. And uh, and if you notice in the assignment, I'm not giving you the numbers up front because I want you to, to through this uh, without the numbers. Oftentimes, when you're designing something or working in a, in a large, you don't know what the light mass is. You don't really know what the, the solar panel length is. You know these things until the very end, but you don't want to wait to last minute to try to calculate the equation. So what you want to do is be able to do it with algebra, like I'm trying to do in the project. Then at the, you know, words, as, you, as things begin to firm up, you'll begin to put in numbers. So anyway, I'm going to make up some numbers. And uh, here we go. I'm going to make up some values and paste this in. Um, and um, you, you know, so uh, so anyway, uh, I just, you know, if you notice, I'm not very original. I'm just all the numbers in is one, 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 one. But let me show you what happens, right? So uh, suppose you you want to know how many numbers you got to plug. All right. Well, I'm going to. Show what I typically do. So let's suppose I thought D was the only number I needed. Well, I'm going to say numbers um, are D of is one. You know, so the way you get this arrow, you type a negative and then a greater than sign. It'll pop it into a an arrow for you. And uh, this is Mathematica weird stuff. And what, what I want is I want to take number and I want to substitute them into the theta double dot. Right. So that's the way here. So you say the double dot. You say divide by period, and then you know you put in this the guy called numbers, and what it's going to do is everywhere it sees a D, it's going to put in a one. Okay, it'll do the same thing for the FX, and it'll do the same thing for the FY, and then it will rename whatever it is with this one. So let me kind of show you what happens when you hit execute. So what'll happen is it looks very similar to the output before, right? The difference is up here that's in blue, there's a D. But down here, the D is gone. The D has actually been turned into a 1. So if you watch real close, this thing right here is exactly the same as this one, except there's a D of 1. So then what I do is I say, well, it's not a complete number yet, so, oh, I need to put in some other numbers, right? So I'll just paste back the, this in. So, you know, what I do is I put in D, M, S, R, Y, and then I hit Enter. And if I, I see that, oh, there's still a CS, there's still an inertia, there's still a, you know, and that's how I, you know, go looking for the, the numbers. Anyway, I believe I've got all the numbers in here. 
So we'll hit uh, execute and off we go. And the theta double dot is, uh, you know, just numbers in, in theta. Here's your the fx and here is the fy, right? So now I've got them all numerical. Now I'm going to show you how to take that and uh, do a numerical solution in Mathematica. Okay. So you're probably familiar with the solve, right? So let's start with the solve. Solve will solve algebraic equations. If you want to solve differential equations, you, you would say, I want to do a D solve, a differential equation solve. And then, of course, inside you would have to give the, uh, the, the, the equations, just like in solve. So in this case, the equations are going to be um, the... Uh, theta double dot, let's see, excuse me, let me build it up. The equation is th uh, theta double dot, which is a function of time, equals equals, and I've got this thing called the theta double dot, T-H-E theta double dot, boom. So I'm saying theta double dot is equal to this equation that I have uh, up there. And when you solve differential equations, you have to have uh, initial conditions, right? Just like every time you integrate, you've got an arbitrary constant. So you need to supply the initial conditions. This is how you do it. Uh, what you want to do is tell it what the original, you know, theta is. So you say theta at time equals zero. So it's a square bracket at time equals zero, right? Close bracket equals equals. Uh, what is it? Well, I think in this case, uh, I'm going to say it's 90 degrees. 90 degrees. You also need the initial speed because you've got to, you know, you're going to integrate twice. Uh, you're going to, you have a theta double dot. You're going to integrate it twice to get all the way back to theta. So uh, that would be theta tick or theta dot. Whoops. Initial condition of zero. Hang on. Somebody's knocking on my door. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, we keep going. So this is the initial uh, velocity. Uh, so it's an equation. So theta tick at time zero equals equals. We'll say it starts at rest. Uh, now this is a set of equations, so I need to put it around a bracket. I should have copied this anyway. Uh, a wiggle bracket, so it's a set of equations that I'm solving. And then the next thing is you want to tell it what you're solving for. And so I wanted to solve for say theta of t, right? So that's the uh, uh, the, the differential you solve, and then you would end the bracket. Now, that's how you would do it if it was solvable. Okay. So in your particular case, you're probably going to have some sines and cosines. You're not going to be able to analytically solve it. So what you would do is you want to do a numerical solution. So you'd say, I want to do a in the solve, a numerical solution. The, the uh, parameters are pretty the same thing. You can get this if you it. But uh, the other thing that when you're doing a numerical solve, you tell it uh, what range of time, of time that you wanted to, to integrate for. So you want to integrate over time, and you want to start time at, at time equals zero, and you want to go for, let's say, uh, 10 seconds. And then you, you close your bracket there. That would be a, a numerical solve. I'm going to call this the n uh, D answer. So this is the numerical differential equation answer. One equals sign. So I'm going to name it this guy. And I hit enter. It comes back with this cryptic looking thing. Um, but that's your, it's a numerical solution. And what I'm going to do is show you how to plot this. So uh, I'm going to, you know, the what I've solved for is theta. So what this function is, is it's the angle theta. So what I do, and this is a little bit cryptic, so you know, just kind of, uh, let's copy it, make sure I don't do it wrong. Okay, so copy there. I'm going to paste it in down here. There we go. So you, you've seen this before. This is, you know, the substitute in wherever you see it. Okay, so that's what that means. So what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, theta t, the thing I solve for, theta t, put it here, theta t, and I do this, you know, divide period. And then here is the name of the solution, in the answer. I want the first solution. Sometimes you'll end up with, you know, I don't, I can't tell you when you would, but you, it, maybe you have two answers to uh, these guys. I want the first one. That's the only one I have. And uh, what I want to do is I want to plot that from time equals zero to 10. Now you can't put a different, you can't put more, you can't put 
something bigger than tissue you only solved it up until 10 seconds you can go from zero to one uh, anything less than 10 but you can't go beyond 10 uh, so that's how you would plot the thing and we'll hit enter and all of a sudden that you see that the angle blows up okay I'm gonna pause here for a minute I'm gonna ask you do you think that's right would that would you expect your solution to do that I don't think I would expect this to, you know, the, the solar panel to do that. You got a spring. You're going to let the thing go. Maybe it'll wiggle a little bit, but no way is it going to go to 600,000 radians. Give me a break. So there's definitely something wrong with this. Now, what's wrong is I made up this problem. It's easy to solve made up problem. Well, I don't know. You can solve made up problems. No issue with it. But real problems will give you real solutions. And this is really one, uh, just plucked it out of the sky. But anyway, when you get your plot, you might want to take a look at it and ask yourself, does this look right? I have a negative somewhere, or maybe I've made a mistake. And that I'm going to be asking you to do with yours is, are you sure you're getting an answer? Look at the results and see. Okay. So uh, suppose you wanted to uh, solve for theta uh, theta double dot or theta dot. Okay. So if you wanted to do something like that, you would do this. I'm going to copy it and paste it, and uh, paste it in down here. And uh, the only difference would be let's give it a different name. So this would be nd. Uh, I don't call it uh, the the derivative, right? D in D answer. Okay, and then it's the same equation as before, right? Same equation, but this time I want to solve for theta tick. And hit enter, bang. So there's the uh, theta dot. If you wanted to plot it, then I'm just going to copy and paste this guy. And paste it in. So plot theta tick for D in D answer from 0 to uh, 10, bang, and of course it's blowing up just like the other one. Uh, clear, uh, just a made up problem. Anyway, hopefully this gives you some information. Some of the things that I have not shown you, I understand, is now that you have a solution, a numerical solution for theta and a numerical solution for theta dot, how could you take those numbers and plug them back in here for the fx? Um, I, I, th I think you can figure that out. Right, so I'm going to leave that to you. If uh, you have trouble, let me know and I will give you some more help. Okay, hopefully that helps.